Coach Narduzzi said, I wasn't sure who spilled that can of paint way back in the day, but we found out this week it was Sean. <laughs> That, that's such a great story between those two, such a great friendship that they have. And it's going to be awesome to see them go at, go at it today. Pitt won the toss, deferred to the second half. Ben Sauls will kick things off for Pittsburgh, and we start things off with a touchback. And New Hampshire will get the ball to begin the game today. It's the second meeting all time between the two teams. Pitt won the first one a few years back, and here is Brent Edwards onto the field for the New Hampshire Wildcats. He's from Central Catholic High School in Lowell, Massachusetts. The coaches, Eddie, called him sneaky good. He's a real elusive guy, and they called him a cool cat. Yeah, he never panics. So he's always cool under pressure. He's able to get outside the pocket and make plays with his legs as well. So he's going to have to make a few of those today. It's, it's a tough pit defense that he's going against. Well, and it's an inspired Pittsburgh defense that got torched for 517 yards on this field last Saturday against Western Michigan. First down throw and a first down sack. That's what they wanted. Baldonado and Alexander share the sack, and that is right out of the gate. Bill, that's what we talked about, getting after the quarterback, and they do it right away. But it was trying to get into a rhythm, and that defensive line, it looks like every single guy on that line was back there getting after the quarterback. So that's a heck of a start for this pit defense. Moves the football all the way back to the 12. It'll be second and 23 for Brett Edwards. They come with the blitz. Edwards gets it out of there. This is Carlos Washington with the catch, and he's knocked out of bounds by Carlos Washington, by uh, Cam Bright. These. There we see Haba already making plays out there. He's going to be a guy that's going to give Brett Edwards an issue, trouble all day. Edwards is going to try to throw the ball and have a big game, but Haba's a big-time player, and he's already showed how good of a guy he is. Third and 25 in the end zone. Edwards gets rid of it. That may be a safety. Let's see. The officials are going to talk about it. It is. Phil Campbell. End zone. Since a foul occurred in the end zone, results for play is a safety. Senior linebacker Phil Campbell put the heat on Edwards and he threw it away, intentional grounding the call. And that is exactly, Eddie, the start that Randy Bates and that pit defense wanted today. You couldn't ask for a better start. They're getting after the quarterback. They brought some pressure and Brett Edwards wasn't able to get rid of the ball in time. We knew that this pit, pit defensive line was going to be a challenge for, for this New Hampshire team. And yeah, he, he couldn't do that. that. That was a tough play right there. Pittsburgh, back in Pittsburgh, this is exactly what the Panthers wanted out of their defense after last week, huh, Eddie? Yeah, just a miscommunication with the offensive line. Phil Campbell came unblocked. Stowball on the return for Pittsburgh following the safety. And Stowball will get knocked down near the 20-yard line in Pittsburgh, leading 2-0. We'll get the ball now for the first time. It was a rough week in practice. Not that they were hard on the guys emotionally, Eddie. They just said, hey, this is pit football. We are a defensive, tough football team. Not one that gets torched like we saw last week from Western Michigan. Yeah, they the grit and and, that, and that's what this pit team is built around just grit and being tough and playing good defense and they didn't show that last week and and randy bates is all about getting out here and getting pressure after the quarterback and putting out a good show in early that was randy behind the bar there upstairs first play and the panthers hand the football off this is jacquelet and he's knocked down right near the line of scrimmage it'll be a loss of a couple of yards actually on the first down play. It'll be second down and 13. Pickett, first throw of the day. And a deep shot for Addison. He's got it. Oh, that right there is one of the best pass-catch combinations in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Kenny Pickett to Jordan Addison. 
The one guy you can't let beat you, they let him get behind the defense on a post route. Beautifully thrown ball by Kenny Pickett, and this offense is getting off to a fast start. From the 33-yard line, Pickett to the air once again. Plenty of room to run, and Pickett slides in after crossing the 25-yard line. This is a tremendous pass-catch combination, isn't it, Eddie? Yeah, they're one of the most dangerous in the ACC. You see Kenny Pickett has all the time in the world to deliver an accurate pass. Hits Addison in stride. It's going to be a long day if you don't get pressure on Kenny Pickett. On the ground, here is Davis, and he's inside the 10-yard line. And Vincent Davis out of Fort Lauderdale. That's encouraging to see Bill getting this running game going. That's something that Pitt has struggled with this season. Pittsburgh goes fast. They'll give it to him again. Davis stretches inside the two-yard line. This Pitt team... It sets a goal to score 50 points a game. They haven't gotten there yet, but they're averaging 44, which is eighth in the country. Second and goal for the Panthers. Davis gets stood up near the one-yard line and pushed back by Bryce Shaw. I love it. Bryce Shaw showing some attitude right there, stepping up and making a goal line stand. This pit team is trying to get in the hurry-up offense and lean in on that offensive line. Yeah, that's a big stop right there. That's big boy football by Bryce Shaw right there. They needed that momentum swing. Maybe they can get a stop and hold them to a field goal. That would be huge for New Hampshire. Ball just inches from the goal line inside the one. Daniel Carter is the extra back. Back there with Davis. Davis has the touchdown. Or does he? One official signaled yes, the other said no. This is going to be a tough one. It was, I thought he got in from my angle, but it's going to be interesting to see this one. It looks like he got in in my, I think that's a touchdown, Bill. So the replay official, Mike Shepard, will take a look. From the goal line, Eddie, what do you think? I'm thinking he got in. Elijah Lewis did a heck of a job standing him up, but that's a tough one. It. I'm going touchdown, Bill. I, I got a touchdown. I'm going to stick with my gut and call this one a touchdown. The headlines, man, you can see right away, did call it short. On the other side, it appeared we had a touchdown call, and that is what they're looking at. One issue that Pitt has had is it has yet to establish its running game so far this season consistently. They've been able to throw it. They're scoring a lot of points, but they're not getting that surge up front. By the way, if you notice... The the ruling on the field stands. So now it's going to be fourth down. Pat Narduzzi has his hands in the air I going... Would... What happened? Well, they got to go for it now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, Bill, I got to go for it. This is all about attitude, and I run the ball again. I'd see if you could stop us. It's been a good goal line stand for the Wildcats. They're going to have to stop Davis again. By the way, that's Jake Cradle in there at center, ordinarily the right guard. Quarterback keep, and Pickett this time makes no doubt. Touchdown, Pitt on the QB sneak for Kenny Pickett. Going right behind Jake Cradle. Sam Scranton in to attempt the extra point. And Scarton misfires. Okay. So, if you had that the early score would be 8-0, that's what you got. Here's the TD, Eddie. Yeah, just that offensive line. You lean on those big guys up front and they protect. 
Pittsburgh's kickoff by Ben Saul sails through the end zone for his second touchback in the opening five minutes. It's been a eventful first quarter for sure. Here's the big play on that touchdown drive, Eddie. Yeah, Kenny Pickett was able to hit Jordan Addison on a deep shot, and that's what kind of got this drive going and got the momentum going in Pitt's favor, and then they just leaned on that big offensive line, and Pickett was able to get behind Marcus Minor and sneak it in for that touchdown. It's his 17th career rushing touchdown. He goes by Rick Tricano as the all-time leader among quarterbacks for rushing touchdowns in Pitt history. Wildcats with the ball on the ground. And again, the Panthers all over Dylan Lobby. That's Wendell Davis, the Mike linebacker from Richmond, Virginia's Benedictine High School on the play. Lobby's a, a, a fast back. If you if he can get to the edge, he's one of those guys who's got home run speed. We've seen it in the last few weeks. He's able to take one to the house. So we'll see. You got to get this running game going if New Hampshire wants to stay in this game. It was a loss of a yard. It'll be second down and 11. Lobby, who wears number 20 in white for New Hampshire, he's number two in FCS in all-purpose yards. The more he touches, the better. Late blitz. Edwards gets knocked down hard. He's able to get rid of the ball. No grounding this time. But man alive, that was Mathis coming hard. Damari Mathis out of Lakeland, Florida. Woo. Bill, and they talked about last week not blitzing enough. So I figured they'd come out and blitz early, and, and we're seeing that. New Hampshire's got to do a better job of getting the ball out of his hands quicker. That's what Western Michigan's QB did last week, as we discussed after watching the tape. So far, however, they've been all over Edwards. This is a tough down and distance now for the Wildcats. Third and 11. Pitt with eight in the box. Here they come again. That's going to be picked off by Mathis. Down the sideline. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Bill, I'm loving what I'm seeing. They're getting pressure after the quarterback. And then they're making, making him make mistakes. There was a miscue between a quarterback and a receiver. And we'll see. He may have stepped out of bounds. We'll take a look at this one. Yeah, it was left foot, Eddie. What do you think? Yeah. What about the seven-yard line? I was wrong the first time. So let me get this angle and see. Yeah, I'm thinking he stepped out of bounds. We'll see if I can get it right this time. Heck of a play, heck of a run back, but I think it's coming back. The Panthers thrive in this aggressive defensive scheme, Eddie, that puts their corners on an island. And they didn't feel well about the way they played last week against Western Michigan. They gave up a ton of passing yards. That is a proud group in that defensive back meetings room here at Pitt. That is, and playing at defensive back, you have a short-term memory, but those guys, they didn't let it go, and they wanted to come out here and, and put forth a good effort, and we're seeing that so far. Bill, I tell you what, if I'm wrong on this one, I need to get my eyes checked. I'm pretty sure he's he stepped out of bounds right here. I'm not trying to go over two. The call on the field was a touchdown. The referee, Ricky Johnson, and again, the replay official, Mike Shepard. I think the fans even know he stepped out of bounds. You can tell they're not too excited. They know it's coming back. One more look. It's got to be that foot that's about to hit the ground. That, wow. That looks close. The replay official, Mike Shepard, and the referee, Riley Johnson, are looking at this just with you. They're examining it as well. Over oh, two, it's looking like good griefs. <laughs> Damari is saying, I did not step out of bounds.
This defense has a sack, a safety, and it hopes it has a pick six. Let's After see. further review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands. And so Mathis gets a pick six, and Pitt leads 14-0. Ben Saul is in to attempt the extra point. That's the fourth time we've heard the train horn in the first seven minutes of the game. They've only got two touchdowns. And the second time I've been wrong. <laughs> Pitt's missed three extra points this season. Let's see how Sauls does on this one. Make it four. Well, we know what they'll be working on in special teams practice this week at Pitt, huh? Yeah, it's not a good way to end the drive. I mean, two missed PATs. But with the safety, it remains Pittsburgh 14 and New Hampshire nothing here in the first quarter. Meanwhile, what is going through the mind of Brett Edwards? He has been hit and chased and hurried right after the pit fight song was finishing up right before the game. He has had no time to do anything. Absolutely zero. And watch what Pitt is doing. They're bringing pressure from the outside because they know Brett Edwards likes to get outside the pocket and make things happen. So Pitt scheming him up well and giving him a lot of trouble. Sauls, who's missed the two extra points, will try to pick up his third touchback of the first quarter. Five and a half minutes of play. Boy, it's been an eventful opening quarter. This will be returnable. From the five-yard line, Lottie makes one man miss and gets ahead to the 21-yard line. Well, week four of college football continues later today on ACC Network at 4 p.m. Eastern. It's Kansas and Duke from Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham. And our day is capped off by our ACC and primetime matchup presented by Geico Georgia Tech taking on Sam Howe at number 21 North Carolina tonight at 7.30 in Atlanta. Well, another opportunity now for Brett Edwards and this offensive line for New Hampshire. They've had a rough go against this aggressive pit defense in the first five and a half minutes. On the ground, and a gain of three or four. And that's the most encouraging run of the day. Washington brought down by Brandon Hill. And, Bill, that's normally where you see the biggest difference is on the offensive and defensive lines. When you're talking about two mismatched teams and Pitt being the the better team and that defensive line is giving this offensive line issues and New Hampshire knew that was going to be a problem coming into the game. It's a problem that probably every FCS team faces. Back shoulder throw intended for Espinet. Rule incomplete right in front of the pit bench. We say that though, but you know, Eddie, 10 FCS teams have beaten FBS teams already this season, just in the first three weeks of play. And, that, and that's shocking. It is, in my opinion. You just got to, sometimes you go into the game not as excited about it, just expecting it. you're going to get a win. And like we saw last week with Pitt, Western Michigan came in and, and played a good game and was able to win. Third and six, Washington gets a couple and then gets belted by Brandon George, the junior Mike linebacker from Burnville, Pennsylvania. And on fourth down, a punting opportunity for this young man, Aiden Cottigan, who's a redshirt freshman punter. And Malkey Stovall, the return man for Pitt. <laughs> this is a big play in the game. Field position is going to be key if you want to stay into this game. So these little plays are important. Short punt, fielded on the 42. Snowball given ground. And it'll be pit ball when we come back. Panthers leads the ball back, already leading 14-0 with just over eight minutes to go. 8.02 to be exact here in quarter number one. Pickett to the air once more. And he's got some room to run. And Pickett's out of bounds to shy midfield. Let's go to Abby. 
This pit defense helping the offense stay on the field here today and a huge presence, a rising star defensive in Habakkuk Baldonado. He's from Rome, Italy, and he came here in 2017. Guys, a pretty cool story. He only expected to stay here for about six months. Him and his mom decided that, but after getting several big offers coming out of prep school, he decided that Pittsburgh was the place to be, and clearly he ended up staying. A lot of it was in his uh, recruiting trip, guys, and I'll let you take this. That's enough for the first down and more to Addison. Go ahead, Ab. Yeah, so to continue that, guys, the Pittsburgh coaching staff took him to the Italian community here. He went shopping at some Italian-based owned stores. He talked with some professors in Italian. And so making him feel here at home, guys, is absolutely one of the reasons why he came here, among many others. During holidays, a lot of his teammates reach out to him and invite him over for meals and all sorts of stuff, guys. Oh, there's some good Italian restaurants here in the Steel City. About a Kanda, going to get shoved back shy of the first down. It'll be third and one. That's Bryce Shaw, Noah Palm on the play. It'll be third down and one. I grew up in this city. There's some good places, Eddie. If you want to go on post game, let's do it. We'll take you to some time. Maybe Hal will come with us. Count me in. Third and one. This might be two down territory if they don't make it over the top and. He's got the first down as he goes over the top. So last week, Western Michigan held the ball for about 40 minutes against Pitt. Panthers only had it for 20. They said, you know what, we want to score, but we're scoring so fast. Our defense is always on the field. This is encouraging if you're a Pitt fan, right? They're running the ball, moving the clock. Just getting that running game going, because that's something he's going to need later on in the season. Being able to be balanced. They know, that we can, they know that they can throw the ball down the field, but being able to run the ball is going to be key. Jacques Louis with the catch. He's out of Fort Myers, Florida. That will be enough for the first down. Yeah, there's no question. Pitt can throw it. Pickett's as good as anybody in this conference. He's got deep wide receivers. But even in preseason camp, they thought they'd be a much better running football team. Tennessee two weeks ago and last week, Western Michigan, they both held them under 100 yards rushing. And typically, Pitt is a running team. They're, they're normally really good at running the ball, so it was surprising their struggles early in the season. Stovall made that leaping catch. Boy, Pickett shows, shows us that he can throw a really nice ball, doesn't he? Yeah, he steps up in the pocket and delivers an accurate ball. I'm telling you, if you don't get pressure on Kenny Pickett, it's going to be a long day. From the 15, there goes Addison in motion to the right. On the ground. Nice job of waiting for the hole, and Izzy will take it into the end zone. Oh, that hesitation opened the hole, and Pitt scores again. You know, this is exactly what Pitt wants to do. Just come out and run the ball, get that running game going. He was able to hesitate a little bit and follow his blockers and use his speed to get in. Sam Scarton in to attempt this extra point. Pitt has missed its two previous PAT attempts. That was Saul's. Scarton's attempt. And the Pitt student section roars its approval. 21-0 Panthers lead as Skarton knocks home the PAT. I love it. You look at this Pitt offensive line. You got pullers, and he's able to wiggle in there and get behind his blockers, and then he just uses his speed to get to the edge and into the end zone. This Pitt offensive line, big Marcus Miner coming around there on the pull, able to get in there. Well, with Owen Drexel out at center, uh, Jake Cradle moved to center today. Congolis, uh, Congolis moves up to start as well. So they've got some people playing some different positions. When your center's out, that could be noteworthy. Yeah, because he's the leader of that, that offensive line. So it, it's encouraging to see that you can move around guys in different spots and still have success. Amanda the touchdown. 21 nothing. Pitt another drive. That one took two and a half minutes, and by Pitt standards, that is a long drive, right? 236. Typically, Kenny Pickett is throwing bombs and getting into the end zone right away, but like I said, running the ball is going to be key for their success.
All right, well, coming up tonight at 10.30 Eastern, it is the Huddle Quartet of Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Rick. They'll be back with complete breakdowns of all 10 ACC games today. The Huddle on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. It all happens in the Huddle. All right, Brett Edwards, welcome to Pittsburgh. It's been a real interesting first quarter for him, hasn't it? He has gotten to know the pit defensive front. On the move, he throws. Throws a nice ball there, and that's enough for the reception. What can New Hampshire do, Eddie? What can it do offensively, schematically, to help out the quarterback? Just getting positive plays. That's a good start to the drive. You want to start with something positive. And now mix in the run. You want to get little chunks here and there. You don't got to hit the bomb. That'd be great. But just continue to move the chains and keep getting positive plays. First catch for the tight end, Lepkowski. Lobby goes in motion. They throw it to him. Little sidearm fling. Can Lobby get the first down? He needed to get across the 35. He does. And that's the first time today the Wildcats have moved the sticks. Brandon Hill, the strong safety, came up to knock Lobby down. From the 37, again, they move Lobby out. He's a real versatile guy. Uh-oh. Down he goes again. Big hit for Edwards. He turned around, and there was John Morgan racing as hard as he can to lower the boom. Once again, bringing pressure off the edge. Pitt understands that New Hampshire loves to get outside the pocket and try to make plays with Brett Edwards. So Morgan's able to come off the edge. That's a tough assignment trying to block him. Nowhere for Brett Edwards to go. Caught him off guard. This has just been a nightmare start for New Hampshire's offense. And a loss of nearly 15. They'll try to get some of it back with Lobby. And he maybe gets one. Morgan again making the tackle. Two plays in a row for John. He's a DeMatha product. He'll get a breather now. It will change up on third and long and get an extra defensive back in there. That's two good plays in a row for John. It is. You want to avoid the negative plays so you're not in these third and long situations. There's no real good play call in here. You want to get the ball out of his hands quickly, maybe a screen or a draw. Try not to get your quarterback hit again. Lobby. Tripped up and knocked down. Another tackle for loss. This pit defense has got it going. They're playing with a lot of emotion and a lot of confidence right now. That's the type of defense that Coach Bates wants to run and wants to have. Here's Cadigan in to punt the ball away once again for New Hampshire. Stovall on the return. The last punt was short and very returnable. This one's better. And Stovall the fair catch at the 42. Well, Sean McDonald's done such a great job as the coach in New Hampshire, but you know, Durham, New Hampshire, where UNH is located, is 38 miles from Manchester, New Hampshire. Three current coaches have ties to Manchester. Chip Kelly, the head coach of the UCLA Bruins, Manchester Central grad. Dan Mullen of the Gators, graduated from Trinity High School in Manchester. Ryan Day at Ohio State, he's also a Manchester High School graduate. Both Chip Kelly and Ryan Day would go on to both play and coach at UNH. Kelly was a defensive back in the 80s. Ryan played quarterback, graduated in 2001. What a coaching fraternity from New Hampshire. Pickett aims, fires, and that's a first down catch. Delivering it right on the money to Crawl, who was the tight end of the week nationally and a transfer from Florida. A good looking tight end. Big six foot six, 260 pound tight end over the middle of the field. Typically a red zone threat. He's already got four touchdowns on the year. 
is a big target for Kenny Pickett to hit. Pickett delivers it on the money again. That's the Jacques Louis out of Fort Myers. This is the start on both sides of the ball, Eddie, that Pitt fans wanted. This is what they expected to see out of this team. And I'm sure it's what they expected to see last week, and it didn't happen. So I'm sure everybody's breathing a sigh of relief now that they're coming out, getting out 21 points ahead in the first quarter. On the delay, Vince Davis makes a man miss. Nice step outside. Vince Davis down the sideline. And that's what this pit offense has missed. A guy that can get back there and make people miss and have that breakaway speed. Right here, they New Hampshire has him in the backfield. He's, they got to make that tackle. That shows you that Pitt has those really good running backs, and they need to see more of that from Vincent Davis if, if he wants to be the guy. They're looking for the bell cow back that they can give it to 20 times a game, and he just showed that he could possibly be that guy. In the red zone, pick it to the air. He lets it go. Touchdown. Jacques Louis in the back of the end zone. Bill, that's a, that's a heck of a job by a veteran, experienced quarterback getting outside the pocket and not panicking. You see what he did with his hand? He kind of signaled for the receiver to go to the back of the end zone, and Kenny Pickett was able to find him. A smart play by a guy who's been doing it for a long time. This is Scarton to attempt the PAT. And he is two for two on the day. Pittsburgh extends its first quarter lead to four scores, 28 to nothing with a minute to go in quarter number one. A week ago, Pittsburgh was in a real, real battle with Western Michigan. We talked with Pat during the week. I said, when did you know things weren't going to go exactly right last week? He said, I knew we were in trouble in the second quarter. Today, no doubt, Pitt's ready to play. Yeah, they came out ready to play. And like you said, they had a long week of practice and just getting back to playing Pitt football, coming out and starting fast and playing good defense and, and showing that they can run the ball. All right, here's the last touchdown, Eddie, and again, New Hampshire did a good job early, but Pickett bought himself some time, didn't he? Yeah, and he's able to get outside the pocket and direct traffic. He's signaling guys to go into the end zone and then throwing an accurate ball. People don't realize how hard it is to throw an accurate pass on the run. Kenny Pickett showing why people are saying he's one of the top quarterbacks in the ACC. I like what I'm seeing from him early. Well, he hasn't missed yet. He's 7 of 7 passing today for 118 yards, and it's still the first quarter. Here's Saul's kickoff. And it's over the head of Lobby for yet another touchback. Bill, you see the gloves on Kenny Pickett's hands, and, and you're seeing that more often with quarterbacks wearing these gloves. It's so you can get a better grip of the ball. It's nice. Some guys have smaller hands. Some guys like the grip. Kenny Pickett must be one of those guys who just likes to feel that ball, get a little bit more extra grip. When you played, did you wear them? We played in Denver. It's bitterly cold up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You always, I always wore, wore the gloves, but seeing the quarterbacks do it, it's a new trend. I kind of like it. I mean, on the Madden game, I put my quarterbacks up. I give them gloves, so it's kind of cool to see it in real life. Is that right? Who's your who's your go-to QB in Madden? It used to be Michael Vick. I was going to say, it better have been, right? Stick with the Hokies. Here's a hole for Carlos Washington. Sprinting down the sideline. And the Panthers track him down inside the 10. Longest run of the year for Carlos Washington. The junior out of Fort Washington, Maryland. He gets some great blocking on the right side of this offensive line, and then he makes 72 getting out there, making a big block. Then he makes one cut and gets up the field, and then you see his speed. He's a dangerous back, and he's stepping up and making a play really when they needed one. Eric Howland saved the touchdown, but New Hampshire knocking on the door now in the final 20 seconds of the first quarter. It'll be first and goal on the five. He gets it again, 
Gets inside the five-yard line on what should be the final play of the quarter. So a little life thanks to Carlos Washington and New Hampshire there at the end of quarter number one. All pits so far on homecoming Saturday at Heinz Field. Panthers 28, New Hampshire nothing after one. People always ask me, do I miss it? And the answer is always the same. No, because I still feel it. Third, the New Hampshire team gets a quick touchdown pass right as the commercial was ending. And here it is, Eddie Edwards flipping it from the four-yard line to Sean Coyne. And New Hampshire on the board. Yeah, he was able to get outside the pocket and throw it across his body and throw an accurate ball. That's what we've seen Brett Edwards do and have success in in a, the few games that he's had this season. So that's the New Hampshire offense that that's been playing well and running the ball and getting outside the pocket and making plays. Sean Lahane into attempt the PAT, and that's good. And some life for New Hampshire. They came in here undefeated. Pitt throws haymakers early, builds a 28-0 lead, but Carlos Washington's 70-yard run set him up in the red zone, and Edwards throws his eighth touchdown of the season, and UNH gets on the board just five seconds into quarter number two. New Hampshire's a proud program. They've won a lot of games. They've got that record 14 consecutive years making the FCS playoffs. They're on pace to do that again this year, regardless of what happens today. They're 3-0. They've got a big game, of course, next week with JMU. Big game in the Colonial against one of their big rivals and a national power. The thing is, even if you don't win the game today, it's about confidence and, and going into next week feeling good about yourself. After the game, I'm taking you there on that Duquesne incline. You know, Jess Roy is back for another season of three-day weekend. I guarantee we'll see the incline and the view from Mount Washington. She's going to go to every ACC city, let you know where to go, where to eat, what to do. Some special hidden spots as well. It's Wednesday night. Jess Roy tours Pittsburgh, 7 Eastern on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Kickoff coming back to Pitt, and it is returnable to Anakenda. And he spins across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Good job for the Wildcats, 75 yards in three plays on the touchdown drive, and the touchdown throw for Brett Edwards. I think everybody feels for Brett, right? Everybody knows what it's like. You're the quarterback, you got big goals, and here comes this ferocious defense, but he has hung in there pretty well. He has, and he's shown some fight, and it makes your job a lot easier when you can hand it off and, and get a 70-yard game right there. So a little bit of life for this offense. That, that drive is what they needed. One thing that Mark Whipple told us this week, he wants to get more backs involved today. And we're going to see Rodney Hammond. This is his first touch of the game, number nine in blue. He gets ahead for a yard or two. He's from Norfolk, Virginia, played at Booker T. Washington High School. Here's Coach Whipple, who's the longtime NFL and college coach, whether it's here or down in Miami. But he really enjoys getting as many kids involved as he can. Hammond was a top 20 high school recruit. Pickett dumps it short. This is Bartholomew, another one of those younger players, and he has the first down. So back-to-back -back plays, Whipple gets the ball to freshman. Yeah, and, and, and Whipple talked about Bartholomew saying he's a really good player. He's a young guy that he just needs to play more and get experience, but he's going to have a really good pick career. Pickett is 8 of 8 passing on the day. They get 9 of 9, 2 in a row for Gavin Bartholomew. He's from Schuylkillhaven, PA. That's on the eastern part of the state. But he's a big dude. He's 6'4", 260. And they said he could move around and play different positions, so he's a good asset to have. I mean, Pitt has two really good tight ends who can make plays for them. Man, Pickett's throwing darts, Eddie. That's the other tight end, Lucas Kroll. The ball may have come free. At the end of the hit, the ball did come free. Who's got it? The officials say 
the ground caused it or crawl covered it. And of course, if you're pit, you're trying to run a play right away before they can challenge that or take another look at it. Pickett hands it off this time, and the freshman gets ahead for three. Pickett is 10 for 10. Pretty good start, didn't he? That's that's a heck of a start right there, and he's throwing the ball accurately, and he's seeing the coverage before the snap of the ball, so he knows exactly where he wants to go with it. Whipple said that's what Kenny is doing better this year. He said he's a better quarterback this year than last year. I said, why? He said he can read the defense and he senses it more. He's thinking like a defensive coordinator as my quarterback. And that's a great luxury to have if you're a play caller. It is, and when he's taking care of the ball, he can do it all. That's been the main knock on Kenny Pickett is the turnovers, the interceptions. But we're seeing today that he's reading the defense better and he's throwing the ball accurately. He connects with his 11th consecutive completion. That was Taysir Mack, the transfer from Indiana with his first catch of the day. And Pitts moved it down to the 28. Pickett is 11 of 11 and he's going to throw it again. Through the hands of Hammond. That is the first incomplete pass, and likely Hammond should have had it. And it's tough for New Hampshire. They got injuries in the secondary. The coverages that they're playing are very vanilla. So Pickett's coming to the line, and he's seeing exactly what he's got. I can tell right away, so I know Kenny Pickett can. He knows where he's going with the ball, and it's going to be tough on this New Hampshire defense. How can you tell just by looking at the defensive formation, Eddie? What are you looking at? You're looking at the safeties, and then you go to the cornerbacks, and they're playing a lot of man coverage in quarters, and so it's hard to change up your defensive sets when you have injuries in the back end in the secondary. Noah Palm with the tackle on Hammond on that play. By the way, Palm, this is his first collegiate start. He's from Lancaster, PA. Why is he starting? Well, Pop Bush and Joe Eichmann are both out. The top two strong safeties, and so Noah's getting his first start today. Big third down for Pitt, third and six. They're coming to get Pickett. He gets rid of it, delivers it right on the money. Again, touchdown, Pittsburgh, Jordan Addison. Tell you what, you hit Jordan Addison on a crossing route. It's not many guys in the country that's going to be able to keep up with this guy. He's able to split to the end zone. Kenny Pickett hits him with a ball that he can run in stride with. And that's a dangerous guy right there. Got some nice dance moves, too. Sixth touchdown of the year for Addison. Pittsburgh extending its lead early in quarter number two. They went 82 yards in nine plays. Starton adds the PAT yard line a chance to return this kick for New Hampshire he gets ahead of the 22 yard line well how about this Pittsburgh offense what we've seen in this first quarter Eddie it's been very impressive Kenny Pickett is playing very efficient he's only got one incompletion and two touchdowns so he's coming out playing the way that he wants to he's getting the ball to different guys and in spots where they can make plays so I'm loving everything I'm seeing from this pit offense Mark Whipple said our goal is to score 40 rather 50 our goal is to score 50 points every week I said well if you could give your offense a letter grade you're scoring 44 what would you give it he said I'm giving us a B he, Mark's a tough grader see and I think that's because of the running game something that they've already improved today he said they just got to get a hat on the hat and they've done a great job at that today Lobby brought down by Brandon Hill who's been active as the strong safety for Pittsburgh today Hampshire coaches said we know it's going to be hard to put together 14 play drives. We need big plays. They've had one today. That's incomplete and it will bring up third down. If they're going to go the length of the field on a touchdown drive, Eddie, they're probably going to have a, a massive 60 or 70 yard play on that drive. Yeah, and they got to take their shots when they're there. I, think I saw Brett Edwards. He had a slant route there playing man to man coverage at the bottom of the screen. And he just didn't pull the trigger. Maybe a little bit gun shy after throwing an interception, but he's got to take that throw.
It's aggressive. There's going to be eight in the box, maybe nine on third down. Wildcats have yet to convert a third down today. And Lobby is wrestled down back at the original line of scrimmage by Eric Hallett. Another tackle for loss by that Pittsburgh defense. And the Wildcats will kick it back to the Panthers. Cadigan will kick it to Stovall. Pitt's going to get pretty good field position. Again here early in quarter number two. High but short. Fair catch called for and Stovall hauls it in on the 42. Tell you what, I learned something during the break. Pop Warner. I never knew where that name came from. Never knew it. Then I just found out he was a coach at Pitt. Played oh, Pop Warner football growing up, and now it all makes sense to me. Now you know one of the great names in Pitt football history. First and ten for Pittsburgh, and a play fake for Pickett. Rush comes, and they get home, and sack him for the first time. Good job by Elijah Lewis from Newcastle, Delaware. And he gets the sack of Pickett. Yeah, this is encouraging for New Hampshire's defense, continuing to show fight, just bending around the edge and getting there. Kenny Pickett couldn't find anybody open, had to take the sack. Keep it on the ground again. And for the second play in a row, the Wildcats defensive front. That time it was Silver making the play defensively. And that's Marcus Miner who is slow and getting up. And we have a flag on the play as well. Two men moving, not resetting before the snap. Five yard penalty. Second down. That turns out to be a break for Pitt, Eddie. Instead of a loss on the play, it's going to be second down again. Penalty was before the play. Sean McDonald's coming out going, wait a minute. We just made a really good defensive play, but they claimed it was a dead ball foul. A correction. A correction. The penalty is declined. Third down. So he wins the argument. Very good argument. So third and 12. Pickett has been really good to say the least. He's 13 of 14 today. This coming a week after he threw six touchdown passes on this field last Saturday. Pickett dumps it short. Right near the sticks. Matacanda knocked down. Toscano, Randall Harris tripped him up. And that, that's a really good play. He's looking down the field. Nobody's open. Knowing where his back is and getting him the ball in space. And Abanacanda gets enough yardage for another pit first down. To the air again for Pickett. This time he throws it to Addison. Nice move and he stays on his feet. Jordan Addison breaking free, and he will score. Seven yarder for Addison. It's his second of the day. That one will make his highlight reel. Extra point to seven here in quarter number two under sunny skies at Heinz Field. And the kickoff will be returned by Lobby. And he gets too near the 20 yard line, and UNH will take over there. Yeah, this is amazing effort by Jordan Addison. You just get it to him in space. 
He's able to cut back. You're not supposed to be able to do this in college football. This is Reggie Bush-like. And he uses the speed to get to the end zone. He's even jogging halfway there. That's how good this kid is. His goal is to be a first-round draft pick. He's making a good case for that right now. Madison's over 100 yards receiving today. A lot of fun to catch passes from Pickett. He puts it on the money every time, but Addison did most of the work on that play. Well, let's see how the Wildcats respond down 42-7. Edwards to the air. And again, he just has to throw it away. Here's what Addison has done so far. Look at that average, Eddie. As good as you were. Did you ever have a game where you averaged 32 yards a catch? I cannot remember one. Those almost look like my stats from my whole season. I mean, that, he's having a heck of a day. As, as you know, he didn't throw it that much at Virginia Tech, so. He is having a big day. On second down, Bobby with a nice cutback, or rather Carlos Washington, I beg your pardon. And he gets ahead for about seven. You know, up, off the top, we mentioned that already this year, so just in the first three weeks of this season, 10 FCS teams have beaten FBS teams, right? We saw Jacksonville State go into Tallahassee and win. Montana went to Washington win. I, I mentioned that to Pat, Coach Narduzzi. I said, it's happened 10 times in three weeks. He goes, thanks a lot. Way to ruin my day. But a lot of fans expect this to happen all the time. It's a credit for Pitt to approaching this game and coming out and playing as they want to. Because this is a good New Hampshire team. Don't think for any stretch of the imagination that this isn't a team that shouldn't be ranked in the FCS. And they know that, and they feel the disrespect, and that was that was a, a tackle. That was a, They met in that hole. Wendell Davis came up and, and showed that attitude that, that this pit defense wants to have. And you need your linebackers to meet the back in the hole like that with some authority. Aiden Cottingham, who's been a busy man today, will punt it back to Stovall. Stovall fields it on a hop. And thrown down for a loss. Back at the 25. Pickett and the Panthers get the ball back. Up all over the middle is incomplete. A late flag thrown in as well by the side judge down here. That ball was tipped. I'm curious what this flag is for. Yeah. Evan Horn tipped it, and that's what the defender is saying for the Wildcats. Okay. There's no foul, There's no foul. for defensive pass interference. interference. The ball was tipped. Second down. And so it'll be second down and 10, and only the second incomplete pass of the day for Pickett. Second down and 10. Delay, Vincent Davis. And he gets knocked down by Noah Paul. You know, that game tonight in Atlanta, we're talking about the numbers that Sam Howell's putting up. These ACC quarterbacks are putting up ridiculous numbers. I mean, like, Sam's probably saying, all right, what, what did Pickett do in the early game? Now what can I do under the lights tonight in Atlanta? Yeah, you got Brennan Armstrong in there as well. I mean, yeah, these guys are putting up numbers. It's been fun to watch. On third down, incomplete pass, and UNH gets a three and out for the first time, and Kirk Christodoulou, the pit punter, is going to have to find his helmet and kick for the first time today. That's an encouraging sequence right there for John... Lions, the defensive coordinator for UNH. Evan Horn, the return man. And Kirk Christodoulou. One of the many Australian punters that you will see around college football. Boot is away, and Horn on the 25. Steps out near the 26. And UNH 
will take over right then and there. All right, so what can they do now, Eddie? Obviously, they're, they're down in a big way here. They got JMU next week. What does Coach Mack want to see out of his team moving forward today? Continuing to fight, uh, not, not giving up, and just putting out a good effort and having some positive plays. I would take a shot here if I were them, try to get something going, get some momentum going, and continuing to run the ball as well. They, they had success with that early. Again, Pitt crowds the box. Lobby makes a man miss and gets ahead to about the 28-yard line. Patrician makes the play defensively from Central Catholic High School and a former Penn State player. Coaches know sometimes it's not always about winning the game, especially this when it's 42 to 7. You just want to come out and execute well. String together some good plays and have a positive feel coming off the field. You wanted something good to happen early, right? For UNH, if you're their coaching staff, and it just didn't happen. Edwards on the move, he's in trouble, and he throws it away. This has kind of been the story of the day. If you joined us late, the very first possession, we had a sack, we had an intentional grounding, and a safety. Those were the first three plays from scrimmage. That's not getting off to a good start. No, and... and Pitt's doing a heck of a job of changing up coverages and bringing pressure, so they're confusing Brett Edwards a little bit. No one's really getting open, so it's been tough on him today. What do they do that's so tough? What is Randy Bates doing? I mean, we see all the, the gold helmets. We see seven, eight, nine in the box sometime, but what is the key to this defense? Here they come again. And that's called a catch just shy of the 40-yard line. They pride themselves on stopping a run, and then they're thinking that that's going to help take care of the pass as well. They got some good defensive backs out there. We've seen today they had a pick six, and they got some guys that could play out there, and that's that's very important with this defense. You got, you got to have guys that could cover and play man-to-man -man coverage especially. Yeah, they're a press corner team, but a lot of teams are like that. When you have so many NFL guys like they did last year, right, you could do a lot of this man-on-man, -man, put your guys on an island for the whole game. And when you don't have special guys on the outside playing defensive back, that defensive line has to be good. And Pitt's got one of the best defensive lines, as we've seen. Edwards has been under pressure all day. Here's another punt to Stovall, who's looking up into the sun. He's going to let that go. That's the best punt of the day. And it's going to roll all the way into the end zone for a touchback. We have a flag on the play way back downfield. And it's an illegal shift on New Hampshire on the punt. Illegal shift by the offense. That five-yard penalty will be added to the touchback spot. Timeout. So we'll step aside. One seven here at Heinz Field. It has been an explosive day for this pit offense, to say the least. They're on pace for 700 yards of offense. They were joking during the course of the week. They said, we wanted to get 50 points. I don't think they met in the first half, Eddie, but yeah. that's the pace that they're on here. It's been a heck of a day. Addison's having a big day, 127 yards and two touchdowns already. It's been an explosive offense. You played on some really good football teams. What would it be like to play in an offense like this? Everybody touches the ball. Everybody gets involved, and Pickett delivers passes like he's throwing darts. It would have been fun. I mean, as a receiver, you love that getting a chance to showcase what you can do. Addison spoke to about wanting to be a first-round draft pick. They're allowing him to showcase his talent, and so it would have been a lot of fun if I got a chance to do that. It helps to have a veteran quarterback that delivers the ball on the money. Pickett has only been hit once in this game so far. This has been his day. Aim, fire, connect. And that's why he's 17 of 20. That was his seventh different receiver here in this first half. Jalen Barden. Second and short. Keep it on the ground. Uh, Izzy Abacanda. And he'll add the first down to the 45-yard line. Abanacanda got a touchdown early. They've thrown the ball to him today. Hammond has played. Vincent Davis has played. Delivered right on the money again. 
And that'll be another first down. Jacques Louis with his third catch of the day. And an injured player down for UNH. Injury Josiah timeout. Silver is the injured player. Freshman defensive end from Hampton's Phoebus High School in Hampton, Virginia. So while they take care of him late in this second quarter, let me remind you that Sunday bash tomorrow, we have a volleyball women's soccer triple header. Miami Notre Dame start the afternoon on the volleyball court at 1 Eastern, then two soccer matches, Pittsburgh against Miami, down in Coral Gables, and we cap the afternoon with Virginia Tech and number two Duke. That is in Blacksburg at 5 Eastern, all on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap, that'll be tomorrow. Young man from Hampton, Virginia is okay. He leaves, but Pittsburgh is on the move yet again. From the 34, Pickett. They set up a screen. Abacanda gets ahead to the 25-yard line. It's been an efficient drive. Just getting little short short passes and running the ball as well, using up that clock. That's something that they wanted to work on. Sometimes it's not a good thing to score so fast. Now they're working on ball control and using up some of that clock. Amanda Kanda again has the first down to the 20-yard line. When he was coming out of high school, as Pitt fans know, he's out of uh, Brooklyn. He was the number one prospect in New York State as a high school senior. I mean, you look at the kid, he's 5'11", 215, he's built solid and he can run. One twelve, and all three timeouts remaining for Pickett. And you hear Mark Whipple yelling for the timeout. He didn't sound too happy. 30-second timeout, happy. Pittsburgh, first of this half. That was not Pat Narduzzi, that was that man, Mark Whipple calling for the timeout. And to him, he's not looking at the scoreboard. He could care less what the score is. He still wants these guys to execute and run the plays the way they're designed to be run. So what would have happened there? Perhaps someone lined up incorrectly? Yeah, a lot lining up wrong. Maybe somebody came out of the huddle and went the wrong way. That tends to happen, and he wanted to call the timeout before something bad happened. He said he wanted to rotate tailbacks today. They want to build some depth. They want to play the young tight end Bartholomew. But they wanted to run the ball better. Last couple games, they were held under 100 yards for the game, both at Tennessee and against Western Michigan. They're over 100 yards rushing in this first half today. Pick it to the air again. Pick it in trouble. And he's sacked again. That is Gibson that gets the sack, second of the day. And Gunnar Gibson from Haley, Idaho. Yeah, this is, this is an impressive rush. He just gets his hands down and bends around the edge and doesn't give up. That's the main thing. He kept fighting and kept trying to get pressure on Kenny Pickett and finish with the sack. Third and long. This is Jordan Addison time. They throw it short instead. Breaking free. Abacana down inside the 10. And it'll be first down and goal to go. Is he? Abanacanda has Pitt knocking on the door with 30 seconds to go in the half. I mean, how nice is that to be able to throw a check down and that turn into a big play for your quarterback? That time Pickett was hit just as he threw by the blitzing Evan Horn. The safety coming strong. The last thing Pitt wants is for Pickett to get his hand hit in someone's helmet on a throw like that in this lopsided game. After throwing six touchdowns last week, he's thrown for three and run for one in this half today. That was just his fourth miss, uh, misfire. Second and goal on the seven. There goes Mack. Comes back in motion to the right. 
Peg it to the end zone. Touchdown to Tysir Mack. Well, the first half is going to end, Andy, just like it started with Pittsburgh scoring. They wanted to get 50 points today. If they hadn't missed a couple of extra points, that's what they have here in this second quarter. And they did exactly what they wanted to do. They ran down the clock so that New Hampshire doesn't have a lot of time when they get the ball back. Only 11 seconds left. Not much you can do with that. All right, take it through it, Eddie. Max started in motion to the left, came back to the right. Yeah, and this offensive line is doing a heck of a job. It starts with blocking. You got to give Kenny Pickett time. They did that. He was able to let the receivers work. You see Kenny Pickett's even looking to the left at first. He has the time to get back to the right and throw an accurate ball. Little bang gate right there. Nice catch by the receiver, making sure he's got his feet in bounds. Now you can dance. Four passing touchdowns on the day for Kenny. Up to 29. Uh, last two years. And he's got 10 in just the last two weeks. That's Six last week, four today. One more kickoff for the lefty, Ben Sauls. And the fair catch called for. This will be a touchback. 11 seconds left for UNH. All right, let's look at our top 10 coming into today. At the moment, only one top 10 team is uh, actually two. Penn State leads Villanova 17-3. Georgia, Nashville, the big lead in the second quarter over Vandy. Is this the year, Eddie, that NC State can get Clemson? They have a good shot. Clemson's offense is struggling a little bit right now. If they were going to get them, this would be the year. James and Raleigh at 3.30 on ESPN. 11 seconds left. And another TFL tackle for loss for the Pittsburgh defense. Well, a homecoming Saturday to remember in the first half for Kenny Pickett, the Pitt Panthers, and specifically that Pitt defense. They got everything they wanted there in that first half, didn't they? They did, and, and I'd be happy if I'm Pat Narduzzi going into the half. Even the last play, getting a tackle for a loss. That's like that. We got to feed off each other, play complimentary football. Our guys did that in the first half. Well, over 400 yards of offense uh, of play there for you guys. You wanted to focus on the run game. Are you seeing what you need to see from that? You know, right now they're packing the box a little bit. We'll see, you know, see what they do, but we'll just continue to take what they give us. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Abby. Pittsburgh with 49 points and 417 yards in the first half. The Panthers are going to get the ball to begin the third quarter as well. And a touchback. And Coach was exactly right, Eddie. He said, we wanted to be the aggressor early. They totally whiffed on that last week, right? But it's a learning experience. When they lost to Western Michigan, it was a non-conference game. But his message is, is, all right, we lost, but let's learn from it and come out against New Hampshire and set the tone of how we want to play the rest of this season. Because after today, it's all ACC games for Pitt. Yeah, and he, he talked about adversity and, and how you handle it. And he wanted to see this team respond from that tough loss. And, and they came out, and when you're playing a team like New Hampshire that you feel like you're better than, it's important that you get out to an early lead, and they've been able to do that. Vincent Davis takes the handoff. First play of the third quarter, and the hold is filled well by the defensive uh, lineman there, out right of the, uh, the linebacker, Bryce Shaw, number 13. Bryce Shaw, is, he's, he's shown and flashed a, a ton in this game, and I've been impressed with him, but he's not backing down from this challenge. He's a smart guy. His daddy, Dave, played uh, football at Navy. He's a second-generation Division I athlete. That ball's delivered on the money across to the 25-yard line. That was Addison with his fifth catch. Randall Harris making the play defensively.
It'll bring up a third down and five. How long do you think Whipple and Coach Narduzzi stick with Pickett? I would I score this drive. If you can come out and get a score the first drive of the second half, I would pull them. Try to get my backup some, some time and, and some work. You never know when you're going to need them. That's one of the young players, Gavin Bartholomew, with that reception. Was one of the key focuses this week in practice. Coach Whipple and, and he, he told the tight ends, he says, we, we want to play Gavin a bunch on Saturday. Get ready. Yeah, and, and the fact that he's able to come out and make plays, why not? Why not get him this experience in a game like this? And we see Pickett still going deep. Deep one, Addison's got it. Welcome to the Jordan Addison Show. You need a home run, Addison is your guy. Bill, you can't throw a better ball. He, he put it up there and gave Addison a chance to run underneath it. Perfect touch, got the look that he was looking for, his number one receiver in man-to-man -man coverage, and not too many people's running with that guy. What a day. I think he's counting his touchdowns. <laughs> 56 now for Pitt. 179 yards receiving today. Three touch. Kickoff coming back to New Hampshire. Dylan Lobby from the goal line going to try to run it back for the Wildcats. And he's tripped up shy of the 20 yard line. It may have seen the end of the day for Kenny Pickett. There's the backup. A Patty is warming up on the sideline, as you can see. Kenny's gone over the 9,000 yard mark today, past Dan Marino last week. And Alex Van Pelt has a, he's got a chance to break that, obviously. He does, and you see him with his gloves off. That's how I knew he took the gloves off. He's done for the day. And yeah, I mean, with the way he's going, he, he should be able to get that this year. This is Carlos Washington running with the football. And a solid gain on first down for the junior tailback for the New Hampshire Wildcats. For more on the QBs, let's go down to Abby. Well, last game when Kenny Pickett passed Dan Marino on the all-time passing yards list, guys, who better to get a shout-out than from Dan Marino himself on Twitter. Check this out. Pretty cool, guys. And in talking with Kenny Pickett about his legacy, he knows his story isn't done. He just wants to be a guy who does it all right. So forget the numbers and all of that. He just wants to be a product of what this pick quarterback should be, guys. And he's gotten better and better. You know, last year a lot of folks thought, well, maybe this will be it for Pickett, but he came back. And Whipple says he's really better uh, intuitively. He understands defenses more this year. And his numbers have been great. Obviously, we know that. Six touchdowns last week, five more today, plus a rushing touchdown. Yeah, and he, and he came back and he made the right decision. He came back and he's showing these NFL teams that he's a seasoned guy. He can improve and he's still improving. So he definitely made the right decision to come back to Pitt and play with his brothers for another season. Looked like the left guard moved early on this third and short play. Number 73, five yard penalty, third down. UNH has not converted a third down today. They are 0 for 7 and now third and one becomes third and six for Brett Edwards and it likely changes the play call. It's been, it's been a tough day for New Hampshire today. You, you take away that one long run that Washington had, and, and it, it's been a, a tough win. He's in trouble again. And he throws it away just before he steps out of bounds. Well, I can do the math. New Hampshire has 74 yards of total offense today, Eddie. And they got 70 on one play. That's scary. So that's been the day for Brett Edwards. But again, they've got James Madison next week. And as tough as this might be, and as lopsided the score might be for UNH fans and folks in the Colonial, it, it, it's a non-conference game. And the big game, it's always, right, this week's game is the big game. But JMU at home is a huge game for New Hampshire. It is a big game, but you got to think JMU's going to watch this film. So they're going to try to do exactly what Pitt has done to New Hampshire 
and that's been to keep Brett Edwards in the pocket. He hasn't been able to get outside the pocket and make the plays like he normally does. On the return, a lot of running, but not a whole lot of net yardage for Jalen Barden. Well, I mentioned the fact that during the previous possession, we saw Nick Patty throw the football on the sidelines, and that is who our new quarterback likely will be for Pittsburgh. Number 12, Nick's a redshirt junior from Hillsdale, New Jersey, prepped at St. Joseph High School. Redshirted here in 18. What should we expect out of Nick Patty, Eddie? Coach has said he's a big, strong kid. He's a very good runner. Other than Kenny Pickett, he's the best running quarterback that they have. And he's actually gotten in some games. He's played in some meaningful snaps this year, and, and he's played well. Amanda Candle with that first down run. I think we're going to see a steady dose of Izzy and Davis and maybe even Hammond here in this second half now for Pitt. That's two running plays in a row. That was what Whipple wanted to see, right? He wants to see how these young backs can perform. Exactly. See if somebody can step up and, and really become that guy that they need. We should have known from the beginning, though, Pat Narduzzi did give us an indication that they were going to come out firing and throwing a ball. He said they're stacking the box. And, and when you stack the box, it leaves, it, leaves, it leaves the wide receivers open for deep shots. And we'll see if... Uh, that continues to happen. Strong run. He pops it on the right side. Flag thrown, and I believe this is coming back on a hold. Izzy Abanacanda had a nice run, but there's a yellow hanky back on the 40. Offense number 11, 10-yard penalty, first down. Tysir Mack, who has a touchdown reception today, gets caught, gets caught with his hand on a jersey. And let's take a look on the replay, Eddie, on uh, Tasir Mack. Yeah, it's a tough play for Mack. It, as a receiver, you love the effort. He's in there trying to block. A lot of times, you just got to let go. Yeah, right there, that last tug on that, that right arm pulling on that shoulder pad. He held it a little too long. I like the effort, though. A lot of receivers don't block, and he was at least giving effort trying to block. It'll be first and three. Vanakanda again. And he crosses the 45-yard line. Noah Palm, the strong safety, makes the tackle. It will be a first down. Wildcats are without Pop Bush at that strong safety spot today. Joe Eichmann not playing today. The corner on that, that same side, Derek Thompson, didn't play today. So not only were they facing a red-hot passer in Pickett, they were doing so, Eddie, without three guys who would have played today. That's tough, and Pop Bush was one of those guys. He was an energy guy for them. He'd come out and make plays and cause wreak havoc for the offenses. So not having him has been a big blow to this defense. Jalen Barden with his second catch. Georgia native. They move the ball to the 32-yard line. Panthers up over 500 yards of offense here with 9.30 to go in the third. Patty hands it off again. Havana Kanda struggles his way down to the 25-yard line. Zidane Williams, the linebacker from Springfield, Mass., with the tackle. That is a strong run. That is, and seeing big 57 out there fighting and blocking for him. These pit players aren't looking at the scoreboard. They're continuing to play hard. So Pat Narduzzi's got to be happy with what he's seeing. Give the big guy some love. Show him some love. Gabe Hoy from the Pittsburgh suburb of Upper St. Clair, just across the river in Pittsburgh South Hills. Patty hands it off again. Abanacanda has got the first down to the 22-yard line. You know, this is the first time ever in Pitt history that they've scored 40 or more points in their first four games. Think about that. All the great offenses that they had here with Dan Marino back in the 70s with Tony Dorsett. 
that Matt Cavanaugh led national championship team in 76. At this point, this is the most prolific offense statistically in school history. And, that, and that's pretty impressive, kind of like you said. Pitt's had some great teams, so that tells you how good this offense is. They keep it on the grounder, Rodney Hammond. However, the schedule's going to get tougher. They got to go to Georgia Tech next, and then Virginia Tech, and then Clemson comes here. So the yardstick that we use to, to rate great Pitt teams, I don't think we've seen that yardstick yet. They won at Tennessee, yes, but the 8 ACC game schedule begins next week in Atlanta. Nice throw and a quick spin move by Tipton. That was a nifty move. And they'll give him forward progress down to the 13-yard line. And Pitt had their wake-up call last week against Western Michigan. So they're going to take every week seriously. A lot of times you can look ahead to the schedule and look at those Clemsons and the Virginia Techs. Nice move right there. Good run after the catch. And so Pitt had their wake-up call last week, and, and they're going to be ready to go each week. Hammond pinballs off one man and gets it inside the five. It'll be first and goal to go. Rodney Hammond from Norfolk's Booker T. Washington High School in Virginia. One of a handful of Virginians on that team. He's got the Panthers knocking on the door. First and goal for Patty. Hammond again. Look at that leg drive. And he scores. Oh, those leg pressures paying off, huh, Eddie? Yeah, that offensive line is doing a heck of a job, and he kept his legs moving. That was the main thing. When running backs get contact, you got to continue to move your legs, and he does that. He's staying low, and he gets into the end zone. Big time running. I love seeing it. I love it. The energy on that hit sideline. Big day for this offense. time tonight North Carolina and Georgia Tech this is Charles Briscoe on the kick return with 628 to go hey getting back to the North Carolina Georgia Tech game Eddie you know we saw North Carolina in that first road test they struggled away from Chapel Hill in, at Virginia Tech at night on the road a learning experience as well for them and a lot of new starters so now coach Brown takes his heels Back on the road at night. How do you think they'll do the seat? It'll be a lot better. They got that running game going. Ty Chandler is, is running the ball well now. And, and Sam House found his rhythm. He's even running the ball great. He's had two games of over 100 yards rushing. So that, that's something that uh, I hadn't seen from Sam, Sam Howe before. So it's going to be a great game. Jordan Yates, the quarterback at Georgia Tech, he played awesome against Clemson. I was very impressed with him. So it's going to be a good matchup. And, and that Georgia Tech defense played Clemson about as well as I've seen anybody play Clemson. That's what I was going to say. Your takeaway from the Georgia Tech-Clemson game was that Clemson struggling offensively or the Jackets have some ballers on defense. They, they do. And schematically, they did some great things and, and confused Clemson a lot, dropping eight. So we'll see how that goes tonight. It should be a great game. Isaac Seed gets ahead for maybe a half a yard. David Green, one of the reserve Linebackers for Pat Narduzzi's team makes the play. As unusual as it sounds, when you see the score is 63 to 7, there's a lot of learning and important tape to be gathered here on these guys, right? Because these are kids that ordinarily aren't playing for Pitt. And it's great for them to get this experience because it's a crazy long season, so you never know how what injuries are going to happen. So getting these guys this experience is valuable for the team, just in case one of these guys needs to step up later in the year. They try to set up the screen, and John Morgan would have none of it, diving in the air to bat it down. And that pit defense, which has been so aggressive today, forces another three and out. Yeah, it's tough on offensive coordinator when you can't even complete a screen pass. This is supposed to be the easiest pass in the playbook, and Pitt makes it hard on you as well. So that defense, what more can you ask for from them? Barden 
Looking up into the sun. Here's his punt return. Can he get to the outside? No, he cuts it back. Barden all the way down to the 35 or so. Let's go down to Abby. Well, here is a nice little video for your viewing pleasure of defensive line coach Charlie Partridge cut blocking a garbage can. Guys, this is something that he does when his team meets their sack goals in a, in a game. It's one of their own grueling defensive drills. Charlie Partridge is a very active coach, guys. He's always running around practice, stripping the ball from guys, punching balls out from the managers. And so there is a trash can behind me, but it's a little more square. So I don't know if I'm going to try to cut block it. Uh, I, Bill, I don't know if you have any round ones up there, but if you do, I accept the challenge. Come on up. Charlie's an athletic guy. Here is Mac. Mac down the sideline. He stumbles and goes out of bounds. You know what else Charlie Partridge does really well, Eddie, is he recruits Florida for Pitt. All four of those defensive linemen that he coaches, all four starters played high school ball in Florida. That's impressive, and, and, and it makes sense of how why they're so good and so twitchy and so fast. A lot of, a lot of good athletes coming out of Florida. But, Bill, there's, there's always that one coach on a coaching staff. Personal it's foul. Illegal block below the waist. Number 86 on the offense. 15-yard penalty. First down. That was the freshman tight end. There's always one coach who what? That has that energy. That's always bringing energy for the for the team, and, and he's that for this pit for this pit defense. Seven of Pitt's eleven starters on defense he recruited and signed, all from the Sunshine State. We're not quite ready to call the pit defensive front the Florida Gators, but it's the closest thing we've got in the Steel City. First and ten. Some people enjoy the recruiting game, right? Some coaches just love that, and that's what their careers are built on, and he's one of those guys. Yeah, and he's obviously good at it, and that, that pit, pit dip, defense is fast. And where do you go to get fast, guys? You go to Florida. You go to Florida, you go to Texas. Texas is a little bit too far away from Pitt, so they went down to Florida and found some guys that could really play. There's Hammond on the run. This is actually a first and 22 plays ago. Now they're in a very makeable third and short. Hammond gets the first down. Noah Palm with the tackle again, and the clock continues to move. And the fact that they're still able to run the ball is impressive. Because like Coach Narduzzi said at the half, they're packing the box. They're loading up the box and playing man-to-man -man on the outside, and they still can't stop it. Play fake for Patty. Dumps it off short nicely to Bradley. Stays in bounds. Bradley's out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, a freshman. That's where he played his high school ball. He actually uh, spent some time in the D.C. area. Played for DeMatha. You grew up in Northern Virginia. Did you ever play DeMatha? I actually did. I, I went to private school for one year. Went to Paul the Sixth, and, uh -huh. and we ended up playing DeMatha. And I think that team had about 25 guys on it that went D1. So didn't really turn out too well for us that day. First goal on the nine, Hammond spinning, and he gets down to the five. Eddie's one of the great players in Westfield High School football and then had a brilliant career at Virginia Tech before nine years in the NFL. It was a, it was a good run, and, and it's good to be back around the game and makes me miss it. I don't know about being out there anymore, but it's good to be up here in the booth. Straight ahead running, Hammond plows to the two. These coaches are so tight. Abby told the story earlier about how Coach Narduzzi and Coach McConnell are tight. No one wants to run the score up on anybody, but they are two yards away from getting close to 70. Yeah, and, and, and it's tough. What can you do? You can't tell your guys to, to not play hard, so you're running the ball, and. It just so happens that you're scoring a lot of points, and they're friends. They'll get over it. 
Hammond stretches, and he scores. Keldrick Wilson injured pit player on the touchdown run, but Rodney Hammond gets into the end zone, and Pittsburgh hits 69 on the scoreboard here in the third quarter. You talk about wanting to run the ball, they've been able to do that today. Really impressive the way that this offensive line is playing, especially with them moving around, switching guys to different positions. So great showing for that offensive line today. Right here, we just got a great effort by the backs and offensive line. Look at the offensive lineman pushing this guy into the end zone. If you can finish with your guy in that end zone as an offensive lineman, you know you're going to score a touchdown. Here. Last time Pitt scored 70 points was in 2016 against Syracuse. There it is. 76 to 61. You sure that's not a basketball game? That might have been Bayheim against Jamie Dixon. No. Long time. He says his wife loves it because it's easy to find a babysitter. But the one bad part, according to the players, you always have to stay in the backyard. You just never know when coach is going to be riding his bike down the street and see them up to, you know, maybe some no good in the front yard. He says his players are pretty well behaved. But a special uh, story shared by Evan Horn running into him at the grocery store. It was Easter Sunday, and Evan and his roommate wanted to make dinner. And so coach said, Evan, what are you doing here on Easter Sunday? And he said, well, coach, I want to cook an Easter dinner. Coach Mack said, no, come on over to my house. You're eating with my family. One of the perks when your head coach lives on campus. That's a leaping reception out of the 35-yard line by Griffin Helm. And so Evan Horn from Lebanon, PA, had to have a wonderful Easter dinner with his head coach and the whole family. You got to take care of your good players, and, and he's, he's one of the best players on that defense. And uh, quite the athlete. He even played for the New Hampshire basketball team. So well-rounded athlete and, and well-liked by the head coach. To the air again. And across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Would you like, honestly, your head coach to live on campus with you? I would hate it. <laughs> it would have been a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, you're always looking, looking over your shoulder, worried about what he's seeing, who you're talking to. Sometimes uh, you can be a little bit too close. That's why Abby said the, the guys always hang out in the backyard. Smart players. Slammed over the middle, poorly thrown. Oh, Brett wishes he had that one back, didn't he? Because he had a guy open, and Brett just misfired to uh, Reese. He did, and if you would have told me today that they would only have 28 yards towards the end of the third quarter after last week's performance, against Western Michigan, I would have took that bet. You'd have thought that New Hampshire would have come out and, and been able to move the ball a little bit, especially throwing the ball. And it's been, a, it's been a, a nightmare day for them. A sack, an intentional grounding, and a safety to start things off on UNH's first possession. They're coming to get him again, and that is penalty flag. It will be a holding call or interference, one or the other, on 22 Woods, who's a reserve corner. On that side for Pitt. Pass interference. Defense, number 25. That's an automatic first down. After allowing over 500 yards last week, though, it's a great point, Eddie. They have allowed just 28 yards passing today. This Pitt defense. Yeah, they got the message. And, and they worked hard in practice all week. The main goals was to, to get turnovers and to get pressure against the quarterback. And they've done both of those things. So uh, you just got to finish off this game, continue to play hard. On the ground, Carlos Washington gets a few. And we're probably remiss not by saying we also can take away from last week. Western Michigan's pretty good offensively. Quarterback offensive line in that scheme. That's the end of the third. Back to Pittsburgh in a moment.
Fourth quarter now from Pittsburgh, and Brett Edwards throws a pass to the left. That'll be enough for the first down to Helm, and he's ahead to the 32-yard line. How about some fathead fun? That's Mike Ditka on the left. Well, it's not really Mike. The representation of the former Pitt great, and on the right, Danny. At the time, he was Danny Marino. What do you think, Eddie? I love it, and, and we saw the Pitt players during the break getting in a little dancing with the crowd, interacting with the fans, and... The only thing is, if I'm New Hampshire, that would have ticked me off a little bit being on that other sideline. Edwards on first down, looking downfield and throws it away right before he steps out of bounds. I'll tell you what, though, I think it was Deion Sanders who said it. He said it. If you don't want to see me dance, don't let me score. So I, I'd be ticked off at New Hampshire, but you got to make some plays and make something happen to, to calm down that sideline a little bit. Brett's just 9 of 19 today, 42 yards. Threw a pick six, also has a touchdown today. Second and 10 on the 33. On the ground to Jacob Post. Nothing doing inside. George has had several tackles. That's two in a row for him on this possession. And it'll bring up a third down and eight. New Hampshire today, 0 of 9 on third downs. They run it, try to cross pit up. That is post again. George makes his third tackle with as many plays. They ran it on third down, Eddie, because they knew they're going to go for it on fourth. Exactly. Try to give yourself a, a better chance of getting it on fourth down, cutting it in half, and now you got a chance. You can run it again or you could throw it. Maybe another rollout, but that hadn't really worked today, so we'll see what they got stored up for this one. So you're saying the takeaway for JMU for next week is to keep him in the pocket. Blitz him from the edges, keep him in the pocket, and stop the run. I think I just gave the entire scouting report. My bad, coach. Fourth down, back shoulder throw incomplete, and Pittsburgh will take over. It appears that way, 77 is the score. Pittsburgh has the ball. Uh-oh, another big run. Boy, Pittsburgh's been doing it all today. That was another strong run for Rodney Hammond. Each of the pit backs today, Vincent Davis, Hammond, is he about a candle? They all have made an impact today. Pittsburgh's up over 200 yards rushing now. That was one of the big focuses coming into this game for Whipple and that offensive line, which had to make a change with Owen Drexel, the center being out. Cradle moved over to start this game today. And yes, it's New Hampshire, but they didn't run the ball very well uh, last week. They didn't run that ball well the week before. Patty delivers a strike. Ahead of the 42-yard line, this pit continues to add up well over 640 yards of offense today. And if you're just joining us, it has been all pit from the get-go. Pickett threw for five touchdowns. He ran for one in a clean game. Addison's had a huge game. Mathis had a pick six. Offensively, it's getting exactly what it wants. Defensively, Pitt's been able to stop the run and pressure the quarterback. The band has gotten to play the fight song a whole bunch today. It has been just what Pitt wanted for a homecoming Saturday. Devis Bevel into the game at quarterback for that snap. There's Devis. He's out of Greenville, South Carolina. I tell you what, it's been a good day if you can get to your third string quarterback and if there's been no injuries. That tells you that Pitt's playing pretty well on offense. Bevel's the biggest of the pit quarterbacks at 6-6. Six, six. First and 10 on the 33. And that's a gain of about three yards. Pittsburgh's closing in on a new school record for total offense. 
And with that carry, they're one over it. 658 yards for Mark Whipple. The previous record was set three years ago on this field against Virginia Tech, 654. Through the air. Nice catch by Barton. He's got some wiggle to him, and he's inside the red zone. I tell you what, Pitt's got a ton of athletes on the outside, and, and, that, and that's new. That's new for me seeing that with Pitt having so many weapons on the outside. They've typically been a team that runs the ball well. Now they got receivers, they got quarterbacks throwing for 400 yards. And it's good to see. That's got to be a happy man right there. He doesn't look too happy, though. 673 yards. That is a lot of yards, and there's still 940 to go. Big hole up the middle for Hammond. Stays on his feet, and he's down to the two. At this point, Bill, you start to wonder what this is doing to New Hampshire's confidence. Let's take a look here at that offensive line. Just missed tackles. They had a chance for him to get him there early in the run and just missed the tackle. And that's, that's, a, that's a tough play when you have the opportunity and you don't make it, and they pick up a big game. Bevel back in on first and goal. Narduzzi and Whipple, they've played everybody in a blue jersey today. Hammond stretches across, plows with those legs, and scores. His third touchdown of the game. Just power football. They just get behind this offensive line and running the ball. Backs are keeping their legs moving. We saw the finesse in the passing game early, hitting deep shots. Now they're showing us that they can really run the ball. Sam Skarton in to attempt to add point number 77. He does. And we're back at Pittsburgh. 8.48 remaining in the fourth quarter on this homecoming Saturday. It has been all Panthers today. Another fair catch on the kickoff. And Abby, take it away. Turnovers and emphasis for this Pitt defense specifically this week. Part of their identity so much so, guys, that of course there's incentives when the players are forcing turnovers during practice. And what is that incentive? Well, it's candy, but not just any candy. Candy that sends a message. Okay, so you force a pump, fumble, guess what? It's payday, guys. Interception, guess what? You get a hundred grand. How about that for something that sends a me message, guys? Yeah, you get a hundred grand for an interception, but it's a candy bar. But nonetheless, it worked. It works. It's working today. He's going to be handing out a lot of candy bars today. They got the pick six uh, early in the game for Pittsburgh's second touchdown. And while this score is really lopsided, there's a tie between these coaches. Coach, there's Randy Bates. Randy Bates and McConnell, they both have struggled in their in their health lives with cancer and they work together as tight friends to get through it together Harrion is in the game at quarterback his first throw is caught by cj turner out of rochester new york and he goes down the sideline there's coach mcconnell so he has endured his own cancer story as well, but he relied on Coach Bates, guys, to help him get through it. Yeah, especially whenever you've had a close friend go through something traumatic like that as well, it, it's great to be able to lean on somebody. Coach McConnell said that Coach Bates can't pass a garage sale. And I, I don't know if he means he's a thrifty shopper or what it is, he's always trying to find a, a deal or a sale somewhere. He's busting his chops a little bit with that one. Well, the, the tough thing is their wives are tight. This is a really close group. And when we talked with Sean early in the week, he said, my kids are really excited about playing in an NFL stadium. They're really excited about playing an ACC team. I don't want to play this game because these are my best friends. 
and this is the best team we've ever played. And I asked him, you mean ever, ever? And he goes, yeah, ever. And he didn't expect the score to be like this, but it's got to be tough when you're so close as friends and you see the margin of 70 points. Whipple and McConnell's wives are really tight. It's been a real interesting story over the decades, the closeness that the wives have for each other. McConnell said that they, they play golf once every summer now. And, uh, and he said that he's gotten the best of Whipple, so maybe this is Whipple getting some form of, of payback here. <laughs> UNH has not converted a third down yet today. And that continues 0 for 11. That was Burt Griffin, the intended receiver. As a player, Bill, you just, you really got it. Forget about this game. I mean, you came out, you gave it your best effort, and you didn't win the game, but you got a big game next week against JMU, so New Hampshire's really got to watch the tape and, and then throw the tape away and leave it where it is and, and focus on next week, finish up this game strong. To the near sideline. It's going to stay in play and roll inside the tent. They have JMU next. Pittsburgh will travel to Georgia Tech. Back in Pittsburgh, 643 to play. And Joey Yellen has come into the ball game for Pitt. He is the fourth Pitt quarterback of the day. With his team ahead 77-7. First down. He's come a long way, hasn't he? Southern California, Mission Viejo. A lot of teams don't even have a fourth quarterback. For him to get into the game, it's awesome for him. Well, what does a fourth quarterback do? Is he the, is he the scout team guy? The, the, the holder. You, you do everything. You play special teams. Oh, he's getting a chance to play. Well, coming up tonight at 1030 Eastern, it's the huddle quartet of Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Rick. They'll be back with complete breakdowns of all 10 ACC games today. The Huddle on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. We're showing the highlights of this game. You know, Abby was in Knoxville a couple weeks ago. She had to do a push-up every time Tennessee scored a touchdown. Should we get her to do that now? One point for, or one touchdown for every point. I'm still waiting to see her tackle this trash can. Whatever <laughs> happened to that? That's Daniel Carter with the carry uh, for Pitt. So if you weren't paying attention in the, the Tennessee game last week, Abby, every time the Vols would score a touchdown, their cheerleading, their cheer squad, their spirit squad does push-ups for every point. You get 30 or 40 points. Abby had to do a workout. So 77, go. One. Eight, 77. <laughs> Guys, if I have a candy bar, so that was my reward this time. I didn't have that last week. That, that was impressive. I saw her do at least 10. So she did at least 10 real push-ups, and I was impressed. Very good form. There's the reward. Yeah, you can enjoy it. Yeah. That's the payday. Totally there. worth it for 77 push-ups. Pitt's going to punt with 4.54 to go. Griffin Helm is the return man for UNH. Calls for the fair catch, and he's got it on the 45. Final 4.30 to go. Isaac Seed races to the left, has the first down into pit territory, and a good run for Isaac. Young man out of Everett, Mass. And a face mask potentially as well at the end of the play. Personal foul. Number four on the defense grabbing the face mask. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Been a pretty clean day for Pitt. 
Not a lot of penalties, actually, for either side. They've got a chance to get their second, third, and some, even some walk-on guys on the field here today. Remember, Pitt is a FBS team, has 85 scholarships plus walk-ons. UNH just with uh, 20 less than that. Throw to the sideline incomplete. Intended for Griffin Helm. It's been a long day for, the, for this New Hampshire offense, Bill. It'd be big for their confidence to be able to punch one in here. Tommy Harrion is the quarterback. Edwards had a tough day with just 9 of 20 for 42 yards. Ball is on the ground. Harrion fell on it initially, then it slipped out from underneath him. And Pitt's got it. Second turnover of the game. So a little celebration for some walk-on defenders for Pitt. They're on their way to three and one. Last night, what a job by Wake Forest. Boy, did they look good. Charlottesville beating the Wahoos 37 to 14. Hey, Sam Hartman's really dynamite, Eddie. And he's taking care of the ball. He's, and that Wake team can really run it. Now they got a couple deep deep threats out there as well. I, I thought Virginia would get this one. This is a surprise to me. I knew Hartman was playing well, but Brendan Armstrong is, has been having a heck of a year. NC State hasn't beaten them in eight years. Here's the celebratory dunk on the pit sideline. Expect a steady dose of running now for Pitt. All right, their ACC schedule starts next, Eddie. We've seen good Pitt this year, and we've seen some not so good Pitt. So they go to uh, Georgia Tech next week. So all right, let's put this in political terms. Politically, they handled New Hampshire. Now they got to go win in Georgia. Different bird. <laughs> I feel good about Pitt, and I, I I I know that they feel good as well. Whenever you got got a quarterback like Kenny Pickett and, and Jordan Addison, I mean. You're going to score a lot of points. So it was good to see this defense play better. They stood up after after a tough game last week, and that schedule's not easy. So this is a good confidence game for them to get going. Yeah, the coastal chaos begins, obviously. Georgia Tech and Carolina tonight. And that's two big home games, by the way, back-to-back -back for the Jackets. The Heels tonight, Pitt next week. And then you can see the schedule really gets tough for Pickett and the Pitt Panthers. Throwing Miami there. Miami's not ranked. You never know what to expect from Miami, so who knows with that game. Eli Kosanovich is now in the game, the fifth Pitt quarterback. Redshirt sophomore and a former Aliquippa Quip. Just north of here on I-79. Have you been to Aliquippa? Not a chance. And Come I, on, man. I'm going to take not, you there after dinner. I don't plan on going. I don't know. No offense. We're going to hit all those northern suburbs for you, Aliquippa, Zelian Opal. If I, can't I got pronounce, you covered. If I can't pronounce it, I don't want to go. A rare pit punt. Panthers have over 700 yards of offense today. That's an all-time school record. And the best punt of the day. All the way back to the 14-yard line. And a fair catch call by Helm. Chris Tadulu says, hey, everybody else has had a big day. What about me, the punter? Well, he just launched a rocket there. And the same for UNH, right? James Madison's really good. And the game is at home next week. It's at New Hampshire. How do you shake this off? Right? They watch the tape. But it's a non-conference game against the teams from a totally different classification, right? It, it would have been a great game to win, right? I mean, Jacksonville State beats Florida State. They're, they're going to talk about it forever. Montana won at Washington, right? Huge win for those kids. Okay. This game was never in doubt. 
How do they put it behind them and focus on the JMU Dukes, who, by the way, are really good? Yeah, as a, as a coach, that's the hardest challenge that you have because it's a mental thing. It's, it's nothing physical at all. They were just a better team that day. But try it from a confidence standpoint, you got to try to wash it, wash it and throw the film away and, and forget about it. So he's got a lot of work to do with these kids mentally, but they need to understand that next week is the important week. As you look at Coach McDonald, if you're a Pitt fan, don't be surprised at some point in December, November, December, you look up and you see the FCS playoff bracket and New Hampshire's in it. And don't be surprised if they win a game or two of the playoffs too. They're a really good football team, well coached, and uh, today wasn't their day. I mean, I, I know Coach is going to be a little bit disappointed watching that tape, but they're, they're a well-disciplined team. They play hard, and Pitt's just that good. Mack makes that play, and it's going to be fourth down and one. Play clock and game clock will wind out, and now Coach Mark Narduzzi and Coach McConnell We'll shake hands. Again, Pat did not run up the score. Those are two really tight friends, and despite the margin here today, they'll remain tight friends. A homecoming victory for the Pitt Panthers. They improved to three and one. And there is Coach Whipple embracing his very good friend, Sean McDonald. Sean said, this was a really hard game for me to schedule, hard game to coach, and now they can move on to their...